Only 24 American men have ever traveled to the moon. Not one in the past 50 years plus. But with the Artemis II mission scheduled to launch next year, four more names will be added to that legendary list. I'm Christina Cook. I'm a mission specialist. I'm Jeremy Hansen. I'm a mission specialist. I'm Victor Glover. I'm the pilot. I'm Reed Wiseman. I'm the commander for the Artemis II mission to the moon. To the moon. To the moon. To the moon. The crew of Artemis II, and right there, Canadian astronaut Jeremy Hansen, the first non-American chosen for a mission to the moon. He'll be a mission specialist, joining, as you heard, Commander Reed Weissman, pilot Victor Glover, mission specialist Christina Cook, on board the Orion spacecraft that will head to the moon and around it beyond, then come back to Earth and splash down into the Pacific on a 10-day mission scheduled for launch in November of 2024. With the Artemis program, NASA is returning humans to the surface of the moon and beyond, eventually to Mars and elsewhere in deep space. It has been a whirlwind of activities and interviews for the crew since they were named on April the 3rd. And guess what? Today, all four are in Ottawa. They're going to be meeting with students and government officials, including the prime minister. But before they get to them, they are here with us in our studio in Ottawa. Hello, everybody. From the left, Commander Reed Weissman. Hi, Commander. Pilot Victor Glover. Mission Specialist Christina Cook. Canada's own Jeremy Hansen. Hi. I wish I had a studio audience here to give you a standing ovation, <laughs> but it's just I. So my enthusiastic welcome to the program. Welcome to Canada, NASA friends. And uh, Jeremy, welcome back. It's so good to see you again. Yes, thanks for having us. It's uh, really fun for me to, to bring my, my crew back here, back home. And uh, we just had such a warm reception already. So Fantastic. Kane Space Agency staff, yesterday we spent some time with them and it was just a, a lovely, uh, warm embrace to come home to. Listen, before we move on to questions, I have to ask you, and I don't know who wants to answer this question, but that video that I just played to introduce you, I mean, Marvel, NASA, Marvel has nothing on NASA. I get goosebumps <laughs> when I see that promo video. What do you guys think? To that nobody wants we, to answer, nobody that wants to answer. <laughs> come on commander your turn uh, I, I think the the thing that is fantastic about of course none of us like to see ourselves on tv that's not why we do this <laughs> but the part of that video that we love is uh, a lot of that is real video taken from the artemis one mission which launched in november and landed in december and was a huge step towards uh, getting humans on mars here in the next uh, decade or two so uh, just knowing that that was real footage from a real nasa international rocket uh, that we test launched in november uh, kind of gives me goosebumps well i got goosebumps watching it characteristically modest of astronauts I have another question for you, Commander, as we carry on. I mentioned what you're doing in Ottawa. Yes, you're meeting government officials, but part of what you're doing is meeting young people today, students who are going to be presenting space exploration projects to you. I know that a main part of your mission is engaging with young people. You've talked about the Artemis generation, Commander. What does that mean? Uh, the Artemis generation to, to us means just going out and doing something amazing as, as humanity, as citizens of our Earth. And so getting this chance to take the next step, it's been 50 years since humans have been out to the moon. So getting comfortable operating in deep space around the moon as we set our sights on Mars, uh, you will inspire just by doing great things like that, and that's our hope. There's so much in each of your stories to inspire young people. Christina, I think, I think you can see this. We found the picture that everybody's been showing. I just love this. They'll certainly relate to this from your days, first in Rocket Club and then in years in Space Camp. Tell me a little bit about this. Yes, that's absolutely true. Uh, I love space from a young age. I don't remember a time when I didn't want to be an astronaut. And luckily for me, I was encouraged by the people around me and it grew into a dream that I pursued through college and my career. And I remember those days at space camp. I used to love putting on the blue suit. I never really thought that I would be able to do it professionally, but my hope is to inspire everyone who has a dream to work hard to achieve that dream. 
Years after that time at camp, there you are as part of a lunar mission that includes you, the first woman, beside you, the first person of color on a lunar mission, beside you on the other side, the first non-American. Christina, how do you see this moment? To me, it's a moment that really speaks to not necessarily an individual accomplishment, but the fact that we have decided as an agency, as multiple agencies, as a world, as a country, multiple countries, that we have to explore for all of humanity, by all of humanity. That it's most important that anyone who has a contribution, a talent, a wants to work hard is welcome at the table for these missions. We're going to be exploring for all and by all, and that's how we're going to be answering humanity's call to explore. Victor, I'm wondering what you think uh, the effect of all this would be. I was thinking back to the Apollo launch, and, and when President Kennedy said back in 62, we choose to go to the moon. And the country, the whole country became seized with that dream. But the world, it seems now, is a very different place. Do you think with Artemis you can capture the imagination again? Well, if uh, the events since April 3rd are any indication, I think uh, we're, we're on to something. I, I think the inspiration piece is sometimes uh, understated. It's not just an emotion, the way people feel after they see like that amazing video. It's the decisions that that drives. You know, our country is facing something known as the gray wave, the, the retirement of the baby boomer generation. And hopefully this mission and missions like these can inspire folks to go into to career fields like science, technology, engineering, in mathematics, medicine, uh, which, which help continue to drive economic prosperity. And so there's a real practical ground level impact that things like this have, as we saw with the Apollo program. Right. When you talk about uh, the whirlwind of activity since April the 3rd, I'm going to bring up another picture. In fact, this was another series that Christina tweeted uh, when you were invited to the final, the championship game of the NCAA men's <coughs> basketball tournament. And, uh, Christina, you wrote there on Twitter about how moved you were with a whole crowd uh, leapt to their collective feet to meet you. Uh, quite an extraordinary scene. Um, that was your post, but I want to ask Jeremy. I'm just wondering, speaking of this unifying effect, what did the reaction there tell you, Jeremy? Uh, it really speaks to, I think, hope. I've been hearing this from a number of people is, um, you know, it can be, it can feel like a cynical world. And, you know, I speak with, I have teenage children, I speak with them often, and they're concerned about the problems that face humanity. And I think what our mission really elegantly shows is that if we set big goals, sort of like Reed was saying, we set big goals, goals big enough to bring the world together, we can accomplish incredible things. And I feel like this is, is reminding people that it's important to have hope, and it's a great example that we actually can do things, great things, if we work together. Commander, you've been talking about this as a crew all over the place since you were named on the third. I've been following your interviews, Stephen Colbert, you've been on the Today <laughs> Show, you spoke to uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. I mean, the four of you are either incredible performers <laughs> or you really like each other. You really enjoy being together. I mean, is that true? You get to gang up on the Canadian, I know, but uh, <laughs> tell me a little bit about the camaraderie. Uh, the, you know, we, we've been co-workers for a number of years. Jeremy and I were selected together in 2009 to be astronauts, and Victor and Christina were just a few years behind us in 2013, so we've all worked together for a long time. Uh, there's, there's about 40 NASA astronauts right now living and working in Houston with our uh, Canadian colleagues and a few from around the world. And you could take, I honestly think you could just take any four of us out of this pool of professional astronauts right now and you would get this same camaraderie. But yes, uh, looking at Victor, Christina, Jeremy, uh, we, we are good at our jobs and we do like to laugh and, and the chemistry has been great so far. And how important is that? And maybe, uh, Christina, I'll put this to you. The, the camaraderie, maybe even the trust, all the part of the relationship, how important is that to the success eventually of your mission? Honestly, I think you've hit on a really good point. We can know all of the technical things that we're required to know. We can be skilled up, trained up. But one of the most important contributors to overall mission success is just that trust, camaraderie, empathy, making sure that if any of us notice anything, if any of, ha of us have a gap in something we don't understand or have a question about, that we are completely open trusting each other with those questions, with the things that we notice. And that's really what contributes to mission success because it's right. the little things 
that go unsaid that can often um, be contributors to, to not meeting your criteria for success. And I absolutely know that with this crew, we have already formed a bond of trust that will serve us well and hopefully serve the mission well. And friendship, because Jeremy, I mean, I liked your tweet. You said added bonus. It will be like a road trip to the moon with three great <laughs> friends. Hey, road trip. <laughs> Is that how you yeah. see it, Jeremy? It's some, yeah, it's some road trip for sure. Yeah, I absolutely do. I mean, it's, uh, it is icing on the cake for me. I, I know that, you know, if I could be doing this with people, it would just be a professional relationship. But to have the ability to go with people I have like a true, authentic friendship with, that's pretty sweet. It is a little more involved than that, obviously. Victor, we come in on this. And now that you've been named and the countdown is on to schedule launch, obviously a little flexibility, but fall in 2024, uh, the real work beginning in earnest, I'm sure, or at least the continuation of the real work. Where are you now in the training? We're actually standing on the, uh, on, on the edge of it. It's, it's coming at us and we're all getting ready for it to start sometime in June, uh, the training in earnest. But, you know, this time that we're spending now to engage the public and, and to get out there and, and, and you know, share the message, the good news of, of what Artemis is about uh, is also very important. This is a time well spent and a chance for us to spend time with each other and get to know each other and build that trust, like Christina mentioned. But uh, then the, the classroom work, learning this complicated, complex system, uh, and then our role in, in executing the mission in that system, and that's going to begin. And they say it's about 18 months of training, and, uh, and, and the launch will be when the vehicle and the crew and the ground team are ready, like you said. Uh, Christina and Jeremy, focusing on, on you uh, at this point, Christina, you've been in space the longest of all four at that table, 328 days, and Jeremy is the only one there who hasn't yet had a mission to space. What are you telling him, and what are you <laughs> not telling him, maybe more importantly? I don't think we're holding anything back. It's definitely a priority to make sure that we, we share everything. Um, but, you know, we're just telling him to be ready for a lot of changes. I think in human space flight, even in the programs that we've been doing where we're, we were joining on the International Space Station, in my case, a program that had had continuous human presence for over 20 years in space, there were still changes. There were still unexpected things. And that's what means that we're exploring. So to be ready for anything that comes um, our way and to react to that, to be adaptive, that's really one of the big challenges and big jobs of being a first crew to fly in a vehicle. Okay. Um, Commander, let me come back to you to conclude. And I, I have pages of questions. I hope you'll come back for another conversation <laughs> uh, as we get closer to launch day. But let me ask you that since you're in Ottawa, since you're going to be speaking um, to officials there, uh, Jeremy has spoken publicly often about gratitude to the United States, to NASA, for including Canada and for creating this opportunity for international collaboration. What do you think of Canada's contribution? as you look to Artemis II? Oh, I, we think the world of our, our friends up north. Uh, really, it begins on Space Shuttle and the International Space Station for us. Uh, the three Americans here, we've all operated the uh, Canadian robotic arm on the International Space Station, which has been absolutely critical to mission success. Uh, it was the only way for a long time for us to get resupplies was to go out and grapple cargo ships. So we have a true, our, our astronaut corps has a true affection uh, for the Canadian Space Agency. And as we step into Artemis, uh, one of the gifts of Artemis, unlike Apollo, is that we are really going for the world. We're going to ride on a European service module. Uh, we have Canadian contributions, not just coming in Jeremy Hansen, but uh, when we do uh, assemble Gateway and look to lunar surface missions, uh, and we're bringing along more than just Canada, it'll be uh, our international partner. So for us, this is a huge win. Back to the moon after more than 50 years. Thanks for inspiring us this morning. Je uh, Commander Reed Weissman, and it will go again, left to right. Pilot Victor Glover, mission specialist Christina Cook, mission specialist Jeremy Hansen wearing the patch of the Canadian Space Agency and that proud maple leaf. Thank you. What a privilege. We're going to be following your progress every step of the way and counting down with you. Thank you for the time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.